tables was that, um, although I was saying before, it's kind of funny because it's before opening ceremonies, it's before some of the other stuff, and so you really haven't had a time to be annoyed with uh, me at a panel yet, although that is going to happen. But uh, so now what I want to do is instead of you all asking me the same questions or different questions about voice acting, I wanted to do nothing more than ask you guys questions because that seems like it would be fun to me. Uh, and you can, hear, you can hear from me all weekend. Um, so I just want to ask random questions. In fact, I think I'm going to do because I have the remote. I hear that go off. Is uh, I'm going to walk around and ask questions. So I want to make this as awkward as I can. I think I'm off to get started. So. First, I'm going to drink a cafe of coffee with, like, when I woke up this morning, I felt uh, terrible, as you know, Sandy, and uh, I walked up to the cup, and, was, uh, and the cup said hot. Okay. Thanks, <laughs> cup. <laughs> Little pick-me-up. Uh, okay, so I want to ask random questions. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I love that movie. Uh, like, let's see. What's that ask? Because we get asked random questions all the time. I want to ask one like that too. Um, it's a little bit of James Lipton. I'll do that. Uh, what is your? Do you have a particular word that is your favorite word? I want to ask that. Yeah. I don't know. Hand it mic. What is it? Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Why? I don't know. I just like it. Because you just like it. That's fair. Blasphemy. It may happen this weekend. It'll be blasphemy <laughs> on the bot. Maybe even this hour. More than likely. Anybody else have uh, something? Yes. Book. Let's just leave that. <laughs> a book? Yes. Why? The verb to book something or a book on a table? Just the word, the, the K sound at the end. It's a hard K. Yes. If it was boo, you like the word boo. No. All right. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> you have a multi layered uh, theory. I like that. Yes? Uh, why? W H Y? Four K. Four K. I, so here. I like working with uh, stories. I, I like working with my story, so I'm constantly asking myself why. Like, why would a character do this? Like, mm. what's the story? Why? 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 And eventually, if I hit the I don't know, then it's just okay. <laughs> so just, just keep going. So it's like eliminating the middleman. It's like, look, instead of saying why, I'm just going to go straight to I don't know. And then <laughs> that's good. That's a why. just because it is. <laughs> I like that. I like it. I like it. Yes. Dude. D U D E. Yeah. Dude. I I use it as a noun. So you're tired of the way you use it. So you use it and you want to, it's like an addiction, like you want to get yourself off, wean off of saying dude. I can't help but say dude. <laughs> I'm like, hey dude. You just did, yeah. yeah. It's like dude. It's like I have it. You say it like, dude. Like, yeah. Because it has like multi-level dude. Dude. Like, dude. <laughs> dude, I know. I mean, I like dude. Hmm. All right, well. I bet I'd like it when you say it because you have a lot of experience, but some people would ruin it. Yes? <laughs> yeah, skullduggery. That's like the coolest word ever. <laughs> well, why don't you like skullduggery? Because skulls are involved? I don't know. Skullduggery. I, just, I, I, I don't remember where I originally found the word, but I just found out that it meant trickery. Yeah. And you feel that maybe there's not enough use like in your life. I just, I just feel like I, I, I'll use it sometimes and then people just wait. What? <laughs> so your position is, there's not enough trickery daily that I can really squeeze the juice out of the word skullduggery. Exactly. So what's the point? Yeah. I hear you. And uh, you in the back? Um, I tend to use so or well followed by like the three dot silence a lot. So just that? Well, like, so. It's just short and just dies <laughs> off. So you just kind of bait people. It, it's, you walk through and go, so. It is literally just to break the silence. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, that, that's valid because I think they did a study, and I think it, well, it, a couple of things. One, I think it take for a conversation to become awkward. Once, once again, just give this time. I think it's four seconds of silence will create an instant awkward moment. So if many people or two people are talking, and there's a four-second drop, it immediately becomes awkward no matter what they're talking about. Also, our attention spans are very short, and the average attention span is 30 seconds. Which is interesting because and to prove it, if you ever want to know if that's true, stare at anything for 30 seconds. By about 15, you can't believe you're still looking at it and you want to look somewhere else. And so it's really true. So it gives you an idea about the marketing. Uh, although I think our attention spans before must have been like 50 because uh, with quick edits and the way things are now, I think our attention spans are going to be faster and faster. So uh, when I, 
you know. In, in 10 years, when I come back to this very room, it'll be 50. I just know it. Uh, any other favorite? Yes? Kaleidoscopical. That sounds medical. <laughs> it's not. No, kaleidoscopical. It means ever changing with a kaleidoscope. And it's just a really fun word. People don't believe me when I say it's weird. And that's your favorite word? Yes. Kaleidoscopical. I like that. I like that a lot. Hmm. That's a kaleidoscopical. Uh, yeah. I've never heard that before. Hold on, let me process that for 30 seconds. Okay, any, any other? Uh, <laughs> yes? Anti disestablishmentarianism. The classic. And that is your favorite? Or, I forgot. What, we're still on favorites, right? Yeah. All right. Well, that, if I heard that word in a room, I would wait four seconds ago. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's strong. A lot, of, a lot of syllables. It's a big word, like gymnasium. Any other, uh, <laughs> any other favorite words? Okay. Well, oh, yes? Why? Uh, can it be two words? For the purposes of the, yes. What's yaoi? <laughs> <laughs> and that's your favorite? No, that's just fun to hear. <laughs> yeah, that's an awkward ex yeah. Those are gonna be an awkward next few minutes after that. And by the way, I gotta say, Yaoi is interesting. <laughs> because for societally speak okay, look. Mm. The, I, I don't know if it's the if it's embracing Japanese culture or how that came to pass, but I know that it's interesting that you have uh, very often like uh, 12, 13, 14 year old girls who are interested in seeing. That's a very unique thing, isn't it? <laughs> like, like you don't find that in life. Like, no girl is that. I to see two effeminate dudes looking at each other really close. <laughs> like, it's interesting. Um, any other? How about least favorite word? Although, I think we may have hit on those earlier, but least favorite words. Yes? And then come back? Uh, viscous. That's because of autocorrect. Because <laughs> I, I was using vicious a lot and misspelling it, and I ended up writing a story where I had the word viscous describing villainous actions about 50 times. <laughs> Which was really bad. Viscous is gross on its own, so I get that. Viscous. That's like... Yeah, like gelatinous. Yeah, I don't like I mean, that. You don't want to torture someone in a viscous fashion. <laughs> <laughs> you could, but it wouldn't be right after a while. Yes, dude? Oh, me? Yeah, dude. <laughs> um, stop. Stop. <laughs> People tell her to do it a lot. Yeah. Stop saying dude. No, just, just, just stop. Just stop doing what you're doing. Stop. You don't like rules and borders. <laughs> yeah, you want to be free and here. No, you. I'm very hyper, so I'm always like talking really fast or all over the place. <laughs> stop. You know, it's a good friend that can say stop. Because you want that friend to say that. All my friends are like me, so there. <laughs> Second row. Let's hear it. <laughs> yeah! I don't want that to stop, yes? <laughs> I have two, and it's going to pain me to say them. Flesh and moist. You know what? Moist, moist. is very common. Moist is in viscous world, really. But moist is not uncommon. In fact, that's one of the most... Um, when I think of moist, I think cake commercial. Duncan Hines, moist, delicious, best. So I always smile because I think of cake and I go to my happy place. <laughs> but, uh, but I understand that one. And flesh? Flesh. Let me just keep saying it to just destroy you. Flesh. It's like a... Hellraiser series. Uh, why? Why? It's just such. It feels like such a creepy word, like just coming out of your mouth. Just like, <laughs> like it just. Ugh. It makes yeah. you feel gross, like a, a creeper. Yeah. It makes you feel gross. Yes. Flesh. It's disgusting. I didn't like what I just did. She's right. <laughs> uh, any other? Yes. Yeef. Say what? Yeef. Yeef. Yes. Worse than Yowie and Yori. Spell it. Y i f f. Oh, yes. I'm going to have to plead ignorance on this, unfortunately. But I want to learn. Want to know. No. Really? Yes. How old is everybody? Let's go get rough. I already know, so yeah. go ahead. Hey, you just said so. That's his word. So, basically. Um, <laughs> no, it's the way you say it. Right, of course. I'm just uh, busting the honey. Okay, yes. It's just, I, it's just something that's pretty much going to scars you for all eternity if you see it. Um, I want to see it. 
<laughs> Stormy. I'm surprised you don't know this, considering you're at a convention where the Metal Bear is the main character. Or what? Was that a clue? What? Considering that camo could possibly be used in it too. Oh! Is this related to furries at all? Yes. 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 Um, it's the furry version of I feel like I'm just being like, I feel like I'm in second grade or something. It's, yes? the, fur it's the furry version of hentai. Oh! But they don't make anime specifically like. I mean, like, they have talking uh, assholes. Uh, <laughs> there, is, there is a manga and anime for everything. Rule 34. Wow. I just got a quick, I just got taken to school and took my medicine. So I went to the doctor, I went to school. Uh, and that's what help. Yves, and how do you, how do you spell it again? Y-I-F-F. -F. Yeah. I even like the way he says that. Why? <laughs> See, because you have to say it, it's a creepy thing. Uh, like flesh or like uh, moist or reasons. Uh, I'm gonna look that up. What about viscous moist flesh? <laughs> no, technically three words, that's strong. <laughs> it is better when they're put together. My gosh. Interesting. I'll, I'll do a lot of uh, Wikipedia research. Anybody else with uh, it is? Obtuse. Obtuse, as in why are you being so obtuse? Which is often easy. Like, now, why don't you like obtuse? It just sounds awkward. It sounds as yeah, okay. Yeah, obtuse. It sounds like someone's trying. Yes, I agree with that. Obtuse. It's not like you. Sounds like someone's trying to be sophisticated. <laughs> and we all don't know what it is. All right, so now I'm getting to use it. I hear you. Um, stop being so obtuse. That reminds me of. Uh, was it Clue? No, that is good. Although I love Clue. Who's seen Clue, by the way? And isn't there isn't there a bar? I don't know why I think because it's it's, it's themed on spies and not Clue, but there. What is the name of the bar here with the sliding button? Safe house. What's the password? I don't have no idea. <sighs> That's all I wanted. Okay. Because <laughs> I don't want to do some ridiculous dance without the password again. Oh, it's show me a safe house. Show me a safe house? Yeah, show me a safe house. Yeah, then everybody can all go. No one's going to be made, to, made to a fool tonight. Um, any other awful words? Can't. I like, I like that. Another barrier. It's like, stop. We don't need that. Um, to that end, we'll do maybe one more Lipton-esque question, which is, what would be the worst job? What is a job that you would never want to do in your life? Besides host a training tables panel. I'm just kidding. It's funny. <laughs> like, what would be the worst job ever? Because I can think of a few, actually. Oh, by the way, my favorite word is, uh, Phantasmagoric, just because of uh, or pretending to fan. Actually, that's what I want to do. Um, no, I'll go back to that. So, hi. You can hear me thinking, it's awful. Um, yeah, so, uh, job, worst, dude? Like cleaning up horse stables. I would never do that. And why? You don't like horses? I don't like horse crap. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be making t shirts later. <laughs> I don't like horse crap. <laughs> Way to take a stand. <laughs> Uh, horse apples, we call it. The wink. Yeah, horse apples. Disgusting. Um, anybody else have a related, a disgusting job? Or one that they just don't want to do? I'm pretty sure that, for example, I wouldn't really want to work um, in a mortuary no. because it's rough. And I've heard a lot of stories of the uh, post, or, or of the dead doing the twitch on the table. And that's more than I can, I can't. Stand that. Like, I couldn't imagine. Actually, Whoopi Goldberg, I think, was a cosmetologist for a while, and her job was to, before she was famous, obviously, was to make up the uh, deceased. And she would just, as soon as she would walk into the room every morning, she'd say, Okay, look, you guys are hiding from the police. You can get up and leave now. I won't tell anybody a thing. Just get out of here. Just don't sit up. Don't sit up. Because that would give me nightmares forever, and I'd have to quit. Uh, anybody else with an awful job that's yes? Accounting. I would book. 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 Yeah, that makes sense that someone who doesn't like book would not want to be an accountant as well. Uh, so what kind of job would you like to do? I'm actually going to school to be a history teacher. Interesting. Okay. It's my dream channel. History Being a history teacher? Any specific part of history in particular? World War II. History Channel. Between the History Channel and Discovery, it's Sharks and Hitler. Yeah. I mean, they love it. Ratings, baby. Yeah. It's Shark Week again. <laughs> And it's all, you know, it's, and I saw a thing from Time Life book about, um, or Time Life books about World War II, but the way they sold it, it was like Time Life books, and they had this thing, this, the voiceover, and they showed shots of uh, 
of the Nazis, but they kind of sold it like in an exploitative way, way kind of like uh, the Nazis. The stuff you don't even know about. The grossest yeah. stuff ever. I mean, it was kind of like, you're kind of... Nazis like you've never seen them before. <laughs> <laughs> Nazis on ice. Any other awesome or not awesome jobs? Yes? We're back in the, uh, we're back dealing with the dead. Yeah, I mean, you see, it is creepy. Autopsies are awful. Uh, the slit at the back of the head, the peel down, the brain, the whole thing. Terrible. Hi, oh, everybody. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Flash. Yes? <laughs> well, to go along with the dead team, being a coroner, that yeah. would be the worst job. Yeah. I mean, at least with autopsies, you get paid a lot to do it, I think. Yeah, but, and no, a lot of those people have great senses of humor. Well, they have, like, gallows humor, like, they're very dark. You know? But, I mean, they can sit there and eat a sandwich and be like, oh, yeah. Like, a dead body's right there, I could never... Yes? I found a better one that I would never do. Okay. Okay, you know the people who, like, give, who take your money when you're coming um, on the freeway, you're going from, like, a different state or something? The, the, the toll booth guy yeah, or girl? That. Why? You're standing in a box and you're taking people's money, but you have no one to talk to. You're just like, whatever. They're yeah. and it's the same my since sister. they invented the internet in space years. You can watch <laughs> movies while you do that. I've met a number of people who do that. Oh, my sister, my sister <laughs> told me, um, my sister told oh. me that there was a lot of people who used to do that would like, commit suicide at some point. Really? Yeah. Totally yeah. people? We know they say dentists have a high rate of suicide right. because no one wants to go to the dentist. Because everyone's like, oh, and they, they dread going to the dentist, so very often they. I'm forced to. <laughs> For your sparkling smile. When those things go away. Um, uh, this year. Nice. It won't be long now. Yeah. So you'll have a straight row, top and bottom. Yeah. I didn't have to wear a retainer after that, which I didn't do. Oh, right. I have to do this. <laughs> yeah. Yes? It's a uh, customer service representative. Oh, yeah. Because I would destroy people. <laughs> you would destroy both worlds. Well, the problem with customer service is that you. I think you start to lose your faith in humanity. Where? Because yeah. you have nothing but bad news all day. It's like, why didn't you? It's like, I didn't do it. Why didn't you? I didn't do it. <laughs> and then it's you're on a loop, and then it's like, okay, yes, sir. And like, I, would, I couldn't imagine doing that. Uh, that's a good one. And hey, no one's dead, so that's a good one just for that. Uh, yes? Uh, being the idiot abroad. Oh, Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> oh, but Carl Pilkington's awesome. Yeah, he gets but I would hate to be him just because I don't want to be the guy who's standing in the middle of the street having fireworks shot at me. <laughs> well, that would be bad. Uh, Carl, Carl is getting more publicity for being stupid than any other stupid person ever. So he's been able to parlay that into, into cold hard cash. So maybe he's actually smarter than a lot of us here, or at least me. But uh, I love I love that. That's, that's a funny uh, podcast, for example. And animated short on HBO. Do you have any job thinkings? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Oh my gosh, I could keep going on that. Yes? President. Yeah. The reason why I could never rule a country. They'd all, I'd end up doing something and everyone would end up blaming me. <laughs> you can do anything. <laughs> That's true, you can't win. I mean, it is a lose lose. But, uh, and by the way, what's up with all the, the protests lately? Uh, teachers uh, and stuff? Well, well, I mean, globally. You got Egypt, you got Libya right now. Which, by the way, 20 people dead, they're firing on them. You've got uh, Madison, so far, nobody hurt there. Um, just people are, people are taking it to the streets. So I think it's pretty cool. I like that, actually. Because they've affected change in, your, uh, in uh, Egypt. So, oh my gosh. Hi. Balloons. Awesome. Birthday party. Say what? Birthday party. Whose birthday? Another uh, cat ears. Oh, hi. Yeah, Happy birthday. Sweet. Is today your actual day birthday? No, it's next birthday. week. Oh, right. Well, happy pre-birthday, then. This is actually better because I can have a week's worth of birthdays. That's, that's pretty strong. Uh, so, any other job that's awful or, or awesome? All right. Uh, my other, one of the other questions was, has anyone ever seen a ghost? <laughs> really? I am. Wow. <laughs> Are you, uh, what, what, what happened? I want to see a ghost. Uh, I've always wanted, like, or, or like an alien or something weird, like I've always, or supposed alien. At least a UFO, meaning something you can't explain even if it's not an alien. Uh, what happened to you? 
Nothing physically. What did you see? <laughs> um, it's usually like um, a distillation of light or something like that. Like it's an like, orb? Not necessarily an orb, but things like um, more like the aura kind of thing, or the um, something's discolored. At, like you'll walk into a room and then there's like this discoloration, and then you walk out or you come back and it's gone or it's moved or. Those are tracers. Hmm? I think that, that sounds. Is that driver lens? <laughs> Never done it. <laughs> no further questions. Um, anybody else seen something? Yes, dude. Okay. I want to stop saying. Now I want to say. Oh, it's I, have, I have two incidents, but I have more that I can't think of right now. Let's lower the lights and creep each other out. Like, <laughs> like, okay. All right. Can we got a demo in here? <laughs> you can have the mic. Let's. I want to freak out. <laughs> when I first moved into the house I'm living in currently, um, there was this couple that used to live there that they kept on having miscarriages. So they had this big house off to themselves, but it was four room, it was four bedrooms, but they couldn't have any children. They kept on miscarriages. So um, when we moved into the house, my mother kept on telling me about how she kept on seeing this little boy who was running around the house. Oh no. So uh, we were, I was getting ready to go to school, me and my mom, my mom was in the car, and there was a little boy, he came up to the window, and he Whoa, wait, his, whoa. Yeah. Where are you that the boy came up to the window? It was outside by the car, we were like, in the driveway? Yeah, in the driveway. So you're in the driveway, is it night? It was morning, but it was still dark. And then you're in the car. And a little boy, it was like, you couldn't see, like, it wasn't like flesh, it was, you could see the outline of him. Flesh. And, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, and he kind of made this like silly face at us. my mom basically just like. He was like. <laughs> my mom. <laughs> yeah, my mom. He was like, he was like maybe like four. I don't know. That's how old he looked. And my mom basically just yelled that your parents are not here. And he ran away basically. He, did he, he didn't dissolve. He ran away. He like, ran away. Hey, but like mom. when it came to a point where he was like maybe from the distance between me and you. Couldn't see it anymore because it was just like that outline. It was clear outline. Yeah, it was weird. And then another incident is when same I was, house. No, it, it was at school. Um, can't go anywhere. <laughs> girls, no, there's girls at my school that are really retarded. It was a middle school, so it was years ago. But um, they decided that they were gonna they were gonna see if there was a ghost in the school. So they, you know, kids calling out, "If you're here, um, touch my face. If you're here, do this. If you're here, do that." Which is the stupidest thing in the world because you call out something like that, something might come. Yeah, it's like so, a Ouija board stuff. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've seen Fredo like too. They finished <laughs> and. One and two? They finished because they were all creeped <coughs> out, but we were in the locker room at gym, or after gym, so I was still getting ready and stuff, and I just like felt, it felt like something was there. So I started walking to go to the shower rooms because we needed to go to the shower, and there was a little kid, I couldn't tell if it was a boy or girl. They were curled up in a little ball in the corner of the room, of the shower room, like just there, just curled up in a little ball. And I just like basically skipped the shower and left. <laughs> it's worth being stinky to avoid yeah. ghosts. <laughs> so that's the best thing. If there is ghosts. one, it's, it's, it's cool to stink to avoid paranormal uh, interference. Um, wow. Yeah. You, little kid ghost. It's the creepiest thing ever in the movie. I, I oh my gosh. Hate children. You hate children? I, I don't hate children. I don't deal with crazy little children. Like, if I see a scary movie and the child is involved, like the orphans. Like the movie kids, The Orphan? Little kids that, are, that, kill, that kill things? No, I can't deal with them. No. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. That's like creepy to me. Yeah, you smack, you smack a smack a kid ghost. Uh, any other uh, ghost stories? Because that was pretty pretty rough. That was pretty frightening. Yes. Um, it wasn't me. It's my younger brother. When he was like three or four years old, uh, my grandfather died, and he was deputy sheriff, and he got hit by a drunk driver. So a couple of weeks afterward, my little brother would go in my closet, and he'd be talking to someone. So my mom called him down for lunch, and she says, "Tristan, who are you talking to?" And he said. His name is David, and he described my grandpa, and my grandpa's name is David, so. Did he see him, or just hear? Yeah, he saw him. Oh, wow. He's like playing with him in my closet. <laughs> like you do. <laughs> I mean, it's playtime with Grandpa in the closet, whatever. <laughs> like, no, let's play the hanger game. Like, you can't do anything now. But still, it's a, like, why couldn't it have been like, Nah, that's so creepy. Uh, anytime someone who is no longer alive is playing with little kids, it's weird. Um, any other ghosts? Yes. Uh, I was actually 
in middle school, we took a trip to Most Haunted City in Washington, D.C. What's it called? Most, I forget what it was. It was in Washington, D.C. It was Most Haunted Area. And what? Forks. <laughs> no, this is um, So there's a city close to Washington, D.C. that's known as yeah, the... It's this Most Haunted Area. And I don't know if this really counts as a ghost story, but there was one point where I was walking there, and they were saying, like, this is the area where they used to have... Like all the people along the horses and everything getting ready for the Civil War, and I'm like, yeah, I don't believe you. And then suddenly I feel like this warm breath down my neck, and I turn around, and there's a man on a horse in a Civil War uniform, and I'm just like staring me down, like I'm staring into the barrel of his gun. Like, I'm freaking out. I turn around, and I say, I'm like, damn, what are you screaming? I turn around, he's gone. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say just one of those awful war, Civil War reenactment dudes. But then no, no, he was like gone. He was like there, and then he was gone. And he was very close to you. Like, yeah, it looked like a horse was real. Down my neck. It was so weird. <laughs> to answer your question, really, that is creepy. <laughs> that does qualify. Uh, wow. Okay. That is uh, goosebump inducing. Yes? I have a ghost story, too. You have a what? A ghost story, too. Bring it. Okay. Well, it's actually a pretty mundane story. It's not creepy like. Uh, I wish Mike was cool and had a guy on the horse, but he doesn't. Um, my um, grandfather, the house I live in, um, my my grandfather built, and then you know my dad and then his siblings stayed, you know, lived there, and now I live there, you know, with my parents. Um, my grandfather was in the military. Um, he was a World War II vet um, in the South Pacific, and uh, to wake to wake somebody up, you would always have to press their feet, like you wouldn't shake that, their, their arms awake, they would press your feet to wake you up. And um, it's already one night, <laughs> one night I, I, was, I was in bed, I really wasn't asleep, and I felt like somebody pressing on my feet. And, and I just, I distinctly remember yelling out, Grandpa, stop it, and it stopped. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Actual physical contact with Ghostbusters. Um, anyone else ever levitate? Yes? <laughs> Astral projection? Nothing? Okay. I just thought of another one that actually took place the day that the Halloween special for anime, or that anime show came out. Yeah. It was the day before Halloween, and I was listening to it, and while I was listening to it, one of the bases, I was babysitting my, two, my niece and nephew, and my sister's empty house, just me and the two kids. And all of a sudden, on top of the fireplace, the base that was sitting on top of it fell, it was broke, and I was nowhere near it. Then we went up, I went upstairs because I was uh, freaked out, so I stayed in my sister's room that night, and then my sister came back from wherever she was following the party, and she fell asleep. The next day, my sister came up to me, and she asked me if I had opened one of the closet doors downstairs in one of the rooms. And I said no, and she was like, well, the closet door is open so far that it's broken. And then she said um, that while she was sleeping, she kept on feeling it. Something, someone tugging at her shirt, and then like it would move the sheets, and it was breathing down her neck, and it was just really creepy. And I haven't like babysat at her house since then. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go anywhere. No. Like I said, you can't go home. You can't go to school. You can't go to a friend's house. That was the creepiest thing in the world. I it's like the fireplace is right next to the room that the closet was wide, like broken open. I feel like I feel like maybe you need a job like working at a toll booth because no one can scare you there. <laughs> at least you're alone. Like if it wasn't a haunted toll booth, which it probably will be if you work there, the old kid, they'd be like, ah, that'll curl up and disappear. Ghost car, come up. Ghost car. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, the new movie. Like, movie Thirteen, because everybody is now. It'll be awful. Ghost car. <laughs> the world of big one thing. Uh, anybody else have a ghost or a uh, bigfoot? Yes. No, the bigfoot story. I got, I got two quick ones. Uh, I was going to say, back when I lived at my uh, father's house, back when you talk about the Ouija board, uh, actually, my brother's room, he actually used one when we first moved in there, when we were just little, and uh, scared the crap out of him. I never heard why, but I, I heard like little things, like he'd see crap in that room afterwards. And Actual uh, excrement? He, he would always describe it as some like old lady head floating above him and while he's laying in bed. Whoa, what's up the car? Let's pull over. An old lady would float in a bubble above his head? Is that what you just said? It'd just be a floating head of an old lady or like something. Like Lady Gaga's egg or that kind of thing? <laughs> <laughs> that's not right. So, that's a nightmare. What ended up happening, he, after he moved out, I ended up moving into his room. 
And I never really had anything happen until one night, I was just getting to that point where I was just about to fall asleep, and my bed was against the wall, and I'm sitting there, I'm just about to fall asleep, I can feel it coming, I'm like, alright. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I feel just something scream right against my ear, get up. It sounded like an old lady, and next thing I know, I'm like, my head flies forward into the wall. Did your body stay put? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, were, you were flung across the room by an old lady who said, get up! Well, no, I mean, my bed's against the wall, so okay. it's just, I just flew, like, you know, I had a foot or two, you know, my body flew foot or two forward. But that that was old that. lady moved you. That's, so that's the only time I actually believed anything from there, but the, the, other, the other one is quite quick. Uh, my, in our living room, in my dad's place, we have one of those just uh, L-shaped couches. And, you know, you're facing the doors, the front doors to your left. Oh, like a sectional couch. Yeah. And what it is, you know, facing the TV, anytime you hear the front door open, you usually turn to see who it is. And there's like a big window on the side of the door so you can see who's coming in. But well, what it is, I hear the door, you know, the actual doorknob turn and open. I turn, I look at the window, there's nobody there. We have a, you know, glass pane, like, uh, screen door. And all I saw was basically, like, a little, like, kind of, like, puff of smoke go with, and just kind of evaporated. Wow. You saw, it's kind of orbish. Yeah, you saw, like, uh, oh my gosh, what? Well, an old lady throwing me out of bed is weird. <laughs> That's weird if it wasn't a ghost. <laughs> but it's really weird that it is one. Wow. See, once again, I'd love to have... I kind of want to experience that because... I, mean, I, that, I don't want to be thrown out of bed by an old lady, but... Because uh, it just sounds so creepy. But, I mean, I like scary movies and stuff like that, but... Yes? It wasn't to see anybody, or? No, it, it was like a historical site, and oh. it was a really old graveyard when back in like the 1800s when you died, you were buried on your property. So they thought it'd be a cool experience just to stop by and see it. I don't know, my grandma's here. But my mom... Just play her. <laughs> my mom was watching as all of her cousins and her brother were basically hopping over tombstones and being really disrespectful, and she wasn't paying attention to where she was walking, and she fell into an open grave. <laughs> and she started breaking out, because she grabbed her, she grabbed onto the edge, and she's trying not to fall all the way down, she can't feel the ground beneath her feet, and she's a kid, so she thinks that there's a dead body underneath her, and she's freaking out. And she can't pull herself up, so my grandma has to go and pull her up, and for weeks after that, she was traumatized. She had to sleep with the TV on and all the lights on. And she was really scared, and she cried every night because she was afraid. And this woman would come into her room every night and sit on the foot of her bed and tell her that it's okay. Nothing bad is going to happen. You didn't do anything wrong. You don't have to be afraid anymore. And when my grandpa would come into the room and yell at her because it's time to go to bed and you turn off your TV, this lady would be sitting right on the edge of the bed and my grandpa wouldn't even notice that she was there. So my mom would look for my grandpa to this lady that she doesn't know, back to my grandpa, and she's freaking out. He's like, why can't you see her? And she showed up for two weeks, and mom would basically just hide him under the covers because she doesn't know who the hell this lady is. And it wasn't until she was older that she found out that the woman that was visiting her was called Mary Booth. And she has a haunted house up north somewhere here in Wisconsin. And it's, people actually go there to go and see if they can see her ghost because apparently she was abandoned at the altar, like her husband left her, and then she killed herself. And she's supposed to be haunts that house, and it was in that graveyard where she was buried. So the idea is that she brought Mary to her bedroom. Yeah. Oh my gosh, she. Oh god, I to tell you. This she's is a Girl Scout. This is a Girl Scout story. When I was in Girl Scouts, we heard the same story really? about Mary Boo. And how she was left at the altar, never had children, and she would cry all night. Lou Aaron had children. It's like a Girl Scout thing. Yeah. yeah, I'm so really serious. So, are you, yeah, are you debunking? Or? She, I'm well, her house is up north somewhere. Her house yeah. is up north. That's and you can go visit it. Girl Scout camp in Wisconsin. 
Was there a bloody hook on the door? Or? <laughs> I mean, it could be based on a real character, a real person, but oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> wow, it's either child Wow. So it's kind of like. We used it to freak out all the Girl Scouts. To do the right thing? Yeah. Or else yeah. she'll. We yeah. were trying to ask <laughs> so Mary Poop, uh, is that a Wisconsin mm -hmm. thing yeah, specifically? Yeah, it's an urban London kind of thing. Huh, all right. Mary Poop, look out, guys. It's creepy. Now let us know in your bed. That is creepy. Yes? Okay. Wait a minute. You've had four ghost encounters? <laughs> I had a lot of them. She just reminded me of one that happened years ago, too. So I'm like, this is my last one. I swear, it's my last one. <laughs> okay. So this Probably one not. was in my... <laughs> okay, I, promise I will not raise my hand for any more ghost stories. Okay. <laughs> we'll probably change topics here pretty soon, but okay. yeah, so we'll get so, on this one. This one was in my room. I was laying down, it was like nighttime, I was getting ready to go to bed. And I just, it was like, um, I was actually talking on the phone with one of my friends, and I was looking up at the ceiling, and I kept on like seeing things being like thrown back and forth over the ceiling, but I didn't know what they were. And it, like, was just weird. So I sat up, and I stood up, and I was just looking around my room, still talking to my friend, and my friend just like, what's going on? And I was just like, I don't know, it's just, I, I, I don't know, and I was just like confused, and I looked under my bed, and there was like a dark shadow that it, as soon as I looked at it, it rushed past, um, past me and out the door, and in its place on the wall was written in chalk, which I spread my, on my walls all the time in chalk, it said escape, but it had a hand that was like spread through, like somebody had took their hand and rubbed it. Yeah. You gotta get the ghost stories guys over there. Like, yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, that was creepy. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, and then I just like washed it off and like didn't tell anybody until like weeks later. <laughs> yeah, kind of traumatized, I'm sure. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know that, um, that's awful. <laughs> I'm surprised you're able to walk around and be happy. Uh, this is terrible. <laughs> this is terrible. It comes to a point where it happens so many times, you're just used to it. The ghost. Whatever. Yeah, it's right. Well, what's up? How you doing? <laughs> it's the dude. Um, you know that story about um, the, the little was the little girl falling in. Yeah. Yeah. So she fell. You know, there's a. It's, I mean, this is a ghost story, but it's just funny because you know I'm from uh, Dallas, and, and they have the uh, uh, the JFK all the, the JFK museum. I mean, JFK was of course assassinated in Dallas, and they, you can trace the, the route that he was on and. and Anyway, in the middle of the street, there uh, a lot of tourists always come to you know look around, look at the grassy knoll for uh, nobody there or whatever. And um, there's a huge white X on on the uh, street to mark the spot where he was shot. And so many tourists stand on the white X, go hi for pictures or look around on the white X. It's in the middle of the street. So many tourists almost get mowed by standing on that white X. So it's kind of like JFK and some idiot from Iowa are gonna get creamed in the same spot. So uh, yeah, I'm sure there's, that might be a ghost spot too, actually. Um, yeah, I'm just waiting for someone to just stand there and smile and take pictures of them, because they're always almost about to get hit out there. So it's kind of weird. That was a dark story with no real, and that's how I saved Christmas. I have no idea. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so a new topic, because this is getting a little much from, uh, a little creepy, um, I guess, Let's see. I want to, uh, first of all, who here is from, was, who is not from Wisconsin? Wow, really? That's a lot of people. Uh, where, on the count of three, everybody shout where they're from. One, two, three. Chicago! I love it there. I love it there. <laughs> Although I, heard, I couldn't help but hear Chicago loudest. Uh, <laughs> tear. Chicago, where else? Okay, maybe one at a time. It was a bad plan on my part. Where else? Were they? Uh, Austin, Texas. Oh, really? Yeah. Seattle. Oh. Seattle. Awesome. Seattle. I mean, I may not be going to Cyber Town. Like uh, uh, where else? Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can go and retrace JFK. So that, that's you're gonna be safe. Uh, Austin, huh? So you you came you came a long way to go to this con. Oh no, we uh, we live here now. We used to live in Austin. We live okay. in Washington. Uh, okay. The real loop. Okay. I thought, wow, you just flew out here to. That's cool. So did I. All right. Um, we came all the way to see you. Oh, you're such a great. You always know just what to say. 
I can't talk anymore. Uh, darn. So, um, how about, so, okay, the people that are from Wisconsin, how proud of, are you of uh, the Super Bowl? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, because I just want to take your tip, because if it's open seminars, I'm going to talk about it. And if no one cares, I'm not, but you obviously are. Yes? Okay, while the Super Bowl was going on, I was in Florida because I'm moving in action. So I was in Florida visiting my dad, and whenever the TV was on, all you saw was Packers and Wisconsin Knights and everybody. And I was like, I feel like I'm at home. It doesn't really matter. Is that, well, you know, I felt like I was here a uh, few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. It was jam packed of Wisconsinites, is that what they're called? Wisconsinites, yeah. Strong. And uh, yeah, that was, was pretty cool. Of course, that was the exact moment that we had one of the worst. Uh, Winter storms in Dallas history, which isn't too hard, but uh, but it's funny because they were interviewing all the the Dallas folk, and they were like, I don't know what to do, and the people in Wisconsin were like, This is football weather, like they loved it. They were happier. It was they were like, Great, this is perfect. Uh, yes. Uh, I, was, I was immensely proud that the team, the our team, the Packers, in the Super Bowl because we showed the, to the rest that we can get a Super Bowl easily without him. It's not taking pictures, Brett. That's all I gotta say. It's not taking those pictures. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, it was a great victory, and I, I, I was for. I was. I mean, I guess it's cliche to say it here, but I was pro Packers. That's who I wanted to win, and they did. So that's because they were the favorites, although they were. Um, I want to know about uh, embarrassing moments because maybe some people haven't seen ghosts, but I'm pretty sure something bad has happened to everybody. Embarrassing, I mean. Uh, you know, whether it was a wardrobe malfunction, it's none of my business, but I would love to hear of something awkward. Uh, just cause. Anybody have something they're prepared to admit to? No. Yes. Open the gates. I, my blue look got caught a few times at the door. <laughs> I will say that. Okay, you dip your toe in the water. We'll yes. come back to you. For the full foot. Yes? Um, on Valentine's Day, class in the morning and I, my pants were frayed on the side so I sat down on my seat and my pants split on um, the side of the Was it cold? <laughs> it was pretty cold but I, I just went to the, the bookstore and bought some jogging pants. The what store? The bookstore. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. That was your worst day ever for you. <laughs> the, the store. Any other? That is terrible. I mean, anytime your your pants split, it's a recipe. For, it's a cocktail for disaster. Yes. Um, I don't know if anybody's here, but I'm team Noah's Ark or the Dells. Yeah. yeah. What is it? Noah's Ark. Water park. Water park. Giant water park. Big water park. It's like you said. Wisconsin Dells. Like Wisconsin what? Wisconsin Dells. Dells. What is it? Okay. So it's like um. World's biggest water park. Hello. Lots of, there's a lot of state pride in here. Well, you know, uh, I went to a convention that took place at a water park that was supposed to be the uh, uh, largest indoor water park. That's what it was. Not, okay. Not to start a fight here, but okay. That was in Ohio, by the way. Uh, yes? So anyway, wave pool and swimsuit and giant wave and no more swimsuit. <laughs> How long ago? Um, this was eighth grade graduation, and we went there on a school trip, so... No. So you got to see all of your classmates, and they got to see all of you. <laughs> <laughs> How did that work? So you're like, I love it here, oh my gosh! <laughs> and, and you know, very often when that happens, you don't know that it happened right away, like, I love it! No! <laughs> and you end up with something else going, uh, you might want to... Yeah. And meanwhile, it's like floating, no! <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty much, I just ducked down in the water because like, I felt it come off and I'm like, oh crap. So I sent my friend after it to get it. So you're just like, no, it's fine, I'm having fun. No, I'm not talking about it. The wave pool though, but see, the waves are coming in, so and you have to duck down, so you just have to, you just have to take each wave and go low so it's not to embarrass yourself further. My gosh. What a night. And how long do you think you were without? Oh, not long. That's a good friend. Like, get my tongue. Hold on, baby. You know what? Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I was in, I guess, sixth grade. I was with a friend of mine, and we were at a water park, too. We were in the wave pool, and I was further out in the deeper water than he was. Uh, although we were close, he was behind me. And, you know, the waves started going. And I wasn't just a champion swimmer. And the waves were huge. 
to me because I was so little, and I started to panic. I was like, ah, like this, and I started to freak out. I didn't lose any clothes, but then I, I raised my hand up, and this, I just looked up, and this guy, <laughs> this lifeguard, walked out to the edge, didn't even bend down, held out his hand, and just picked me up, kicking, <laughs> and put me down on the ground. <laughs> My life! Meanwhile, he was just back up. He's like, you know, putting lotion on his nose. <laughs> My friend, and they, they stopped the, the waves for a while, you know, like with the kids in Jeopardy, they have to stop, and I guess it cycles up later on. And all my friends said to me was, man, you ruined it! You stopped the wave pool! <laughs> I hate you, Jeff. Anyway, yeah, we were two, uh, basically, little, little scrawny, six great pieces of chalk out there. We would look terrible. Um, any guess? Uh, I'm being among you playing people. <laughs> That's an awkward moment. That happened. That just happened. That just happened. That's fresh uh, off the yeah, presses. It's, I'm still, yeah, sweating. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the car discussions later on. Yes? This actually happened to my brother, but we were sw swimming at Cape May. Always oh, swimming. And what happened was my brother, he ended up getting some of the water in his eyes, so he's half blind, he's, wa he's walking back, he doesn't have his glasses on, and someone decided that it would be funny to dig a pit in front of him. <laughs> so he's going, he's walking, next second he's gone. He's planted right into the sand about two feet, two feet down. It was in the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> and he went home, and at the foot of his bed, there was nothing there. <laughs> that is, uh, see, well, if you get out, see, I always like the moments after the awkward moment. So they like, ah, fall, and he's like, uh, now what? <laughs> like, does, he, does he get help? Do they dig him out, or what he, happens? He got up again and ended up getting out. It was just the kind of a, at the moment you laugh at him kind of thing. See, this is it half as funny as what my aunt did to the dolphins. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been to SeaWorld, but uh, what did she do to the dolphins? Well, let's just say it was also a Cape May, and kind of similar to wardrobe malfunction, she ended up mooning the dolphins. <laughs> well, what did the dolphin do to her? They just kind of moved on. <laughs> <laughs> Seen it. And you're going, wow. Uh, now, that was just water taking down the back. Pretty much. Okay, good. It wasn't purposefully mooning the dolphins, as if a violent act and anger. Uh, any other awkward uh, moments related to or not related to water? Yes? A, a few days ago, my uncle... I love how fresh the story is. Yeah. <laughs> he decided it would be... Well, he was going to pick me up to, from school to take me shopping for a birthday present, which he totally missed by several months, but that was because of other circumstances. Well, anyways, he pulls up, and across the street he yells, Hey, hot stuff! as loud as he could, with other people outside. I applauded him. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a strong man. Well, he bought me anime afterwards. So. Which, what, uh, what did he buy you? Uh, Black Butler, Waltz Girls. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Row <Woo>! 2. <laughs> Chicago! Yeah! <laughs> nice. Uh, well, so that story has a happy ending. Yes. I have a lot of Did you rip something else? <laughs> no. Oh, okay, that's good. Um, so my freshman year of high school, I got this really nice corset, which had like white around this area. It was like, it's a shirt and I wore like a white t-shirt under it, not a t-shirt, like a long sleeve shirt. Um, so I go to school, I'm feeling good, you know, I thought I looked nice that day. Like I got a brand new corset. Yeah. <laughs> So this girl that I, to this day, I can't stand her. She looked at me and she's like, we didn't make your boobs look even bigger. Jealous. <laughs> that's a sound of jealousy. And, and everyone started laughing at me, so that's why it was embarrassing. Yeah, but you know, she's, she, and you hated this day for that moment? From that moment on, it's, that's in the back of your hand. <laughs> I mean, well, she's done nothing to you after that. No, 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 she's done tons of me to me after that. Okay. She constantly At least she's consistent. Well, all right. Well, I don't go to school with her anymore, thank God. So. Did she fail? No. That's what we all wanted. I wanted, I wanted so bad. Yeah. She was like number 14 in our class, though. I have like 600, so. Wow. So she's smart, too. I know. Nah. Uh, I think if we all work together, we can make a voodoo doll tonight. Put <laughs> pins in her. She'll see. Uh, any other awkward 
Uh, in the back? Um, oh, it's uh, SL. Yes. I was so scared you were going to say something. Um, <laughs> I know. Yes, well, in my senior year of high school, I played Sandy in Greece. And Strong. Yeah. And uh, one day in particular, I was just having such a tough time because I hated the guy who played Danny. I really did. He tried to force religious stuff down my throat all the time. I hated him. So I was During like, rehearsals. What? During yeah. rehearsals, he would talk to you During about. rehearsals. Like when they'd say, oh, let's rework this, he would start going, oh, you need to go to church now or you're never going to be saved. And I'm like, uh, leave me alone. Seriously. We're in the middle of something you want me to be like, convincing about liking you. Just please shut your mouth. Just learn your lines, Zuko. All right, let's go. Yeah, yeah. So I was already like mad that day. And it was one of the dress rehearsals that we had because we had about four of them. And of course I had a microphone on because we had to practice with the mics. Well, at one point he said something in passing and it really pissed me off. And I was backstage doing the quick change between like, like Sandy's epiphany, like, oh, I guess I need to get really slutty to get Danny. Like that was the moment. It's a terrible message, by the way. It is horrible. Um, but during that quick change, they were doing it so fast and he had said the thing in passing, and it just kept going over and over in my mind. And something got caught on a, one of the garments got caught, and I couldn't get it up in time, like, so I could go out there. And I just uttered, well, I dropped an F-bomb. An expletive. Yeah, um, only I didn't say it really quietly. Oh, and you were mic'd. And I was mic'd. <laughs> so not only did I yell it, but it was also mic'd. So then I hear on stage all of the other people that are on the show clapping. <laughs> yeah, take that, Danny. I was hoping they didn't hear that, and then I was just like, oh, God. So I got very stern talking to after that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, don't stop saying that word, just turn your mic off. Yeah. That's what they said. Was it was like a lavalier, like a, um, what kind of mic was it? Like it was, a clip on. Like, it was one of the ones that, like, this? <coughs> Well, yeah, yeah, like the tiny one that's like nude, so it's like just, it looks awkward from a distance, like you have like a growth on your face. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have pretty good production value. Like, that's pretty cool that you guys even did that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I hope the show eventually was good, but you got a dress and you finally did it. You were able to pull it together. It worked out. <laughs> I was looking for that uh, sweet movie happy ending, and then the plot happened. Uh, <laughs> any other uh, terrible situations? Yeah, this. From 
Chicago? Oh, she's from Chicago. I'm from here. She moved in with me. Yeah. Okay. But are you? <laughs> and where are you all from? Fort Atkinson. It's here in Wisconsin. Okay. <laughs> all right. Milwaukee, Shen. All right. Okay. Three problems here. Milwaukee, Addis. <laughs> yeah, I need to get to. Uh, I mean, look, all I want to do is get my picture taken with the Fonz. Yes. <laughs> I have a cheese curtain, too. My mom won that. My mom won a contest, contest tomorrow. She's going to have dinner with friends. Really? Yes. Oh, that's right, because I heard he's in town. She's going to have dinner with the Fonz. Hey. Hey. <laughs> exactly. But no. Well, that is, I mean, uh, that show, and also, wasn't the Vernon show is supposed to be set yep. here, too? Mm -hmm. So is that 70 show. Oh, really? That 70 show, yes, sir. That's probably a more modern reference than that 70 show. Wow. All right, Milwaukee strong. And, of course, that scene in Wings World. We all know that. Maybe not. Alice Cooper. Billy Bouquet. I'll come for Good I just want to tell that today, actually. Uh, yes? Chicago? Oh, as me. Oh, right. It was you. You two were like joining the hip of my mind. Yes, dude. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. so That's my awkward moment. Just happened. <laughs> when I was only like, in Elmer, just why I ended up being the chicken pot, which I was in like fourth, third grade, so I can still remember it. And, and Don't scratch with a scar. I ended up getting a chicken pot on the tip of my nose. And I had a single to, pot? Yeah. And I ended up having to go to the doctor for the chicken pox or whatever, and the doctor decided to call me Rudolph. And from then on, like, everybody who saw me with the chicken pox, like, scar on my nose just decided to call me Rudolph. Until this day, I still have a little scar on the tip of my nose. So that was embarrassing. That is embarrassing because it's always awkward to have a chicken pox anyway. You don't want to go to school because you feel awful and then be called Rudolph. Just the one. Yeah, one on the tip of the nose. I have the chicken pox against a single chicken pox. No, I had the chicken pox like all over, but on my face I had one on my nose. See, that's good. I want to bowl. Uh, yeah, so, if you could, would you have chicken pox covering your whole face or chicken pox from the neck down but just one on the end of your nose? Which one's worse? Probably the whole face. Okay. Body pox. <laughs> yeah, because you can't help but itch, but uh, I remember, man, that is pretty rough. I'm going to have to work that out. So maybe it's on the end of your nose. Because then it doesn't necessarily look like a chicken pox at that point. Yeah, but then you'll just go cross and just, you just keep staring at it. You could also <laughs> take... You're going to look at it. <laughs> You can also take a little bit of black paint or whatever you want to use and just make it like the world's coolest mold. <laughs> Which is just like Rudolph where they put the... You know. uh, everybody else with a, a, a fantastic story of uh, pain, suffering, slipping, nudity, etc. Oh, okay, great. When, uh, this was when I was an infant. I was 18 months old. And you remember? No, this is the story my parents told me. Ooh. <laughs> um, they were cooking breakfast in the kitchen and um, my mom had left the room to go do something. My dad had turned around to get something out of the refrigerator. I walk in, 18 months old, and I want what's on the stove. So I grab the pan with my right hand, pull it off, it lands in my left hand right there. I have a scar right here, and if I didn't have it here, it would be right there, where the soft spot was. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. You got nailed in the soft spot. Well, no, I got nailed in the hand. Oh, because the hand protects the soft spot. Yeah, it landed right, it, it landed on my hand right like this. Oh, wow, that was close. Yeah, um, and if you would look at my hand, you could actually see where the, the handle was going, kind of up here, but the, most of the scar is on the back of my hand. Your cat-like reflexes at 18 months may have saved your life. Yeah. And he's here today. <laughs> Give him a big round of applause. And as much as it's 5.58 and that story just can't be beat because he's still alive and well, I guess we'll call it. But uh, thanks for coming to the Turning Tables panel.